The year month functions and e-date functions allow you to control how dates get forecast. So as a simple example, I've got some actuals here and I've typed in 30th of December, so accidentally not the last day of the month, but I want to set up a forecast that's in this case every three months, every quarter. So what I can do is I go to my function wizard and under the date section you'll see there's a function called EO month stands for end of month so I can point at a start date even though it's not the end of that month and I can then tell it how many months forward it must go so if I click on this cell and put my dollar signs in you'll see what it does is it takes that date and even though it's not the end of the month it goes three months forward and gives us the end of that month so if I copy this across now you'll see it always gives us the last day of that particular month. Using this technique, if I put a one here, I'm telling it now to go monthly in advance. And if I want, I can put a minus one, which would means go backwards. EDate is similar, except what it does is it then looks at what day you've chosen and it sticks to that. Let's just change this back to maybe a one. So if I wanted to always show the 15th of December, let's say for some reason, we actually close the month end on the 15th. I can't just say equals the previous one plus 31 for example. Because although it works for the first two, then it starts going wrong. And eventually it's going to become very wrong. So what the eDate function allows you to do is to again specify a start date and then tell it how many months forward or backwards it must go. So I'm going to just point here and put my dollar signs on. And what you'll see is as you go, it'll always refer to the 15th of that many months backwards or forwards. So at least you can control when you set up um, financial statements what exactly is going to appear and you know with certainty that either it will be the end of the month or it will be a specific day in the month.